Hi there. In this lecture, we see Bobby Fischer against Eric Eliskazes. Eric Eliskazes was actually awarded the IM title in 1950, 10 years before this game, and the GM title in 1952, eight years before this game. Joint Austrian champion in 1929, Hungarian champion in 1934, German champion in 1938 and 39. He was stranded in South America following the outbreak of the Second World War. So E4 from Bobby Fischer. Alice Gaines is plays at E5. We have a Roy Lopez. And it's pretty standard moves here in the Roy Lopez. And Fischer plays his uh, bishop back here. We have C5, so classic closed Roy Lopez position. D4, Queen C7. Knight BD2, Knight C6. And Fischer takes on C5 here. So we have D takes C5. Knight F1. Rook D8. Queen E2. And now Knight H5. We have A4 looking at that B5 pawn, Rook B8, supporting it. A takes, A takes, G3, G6, and you might want to hold on a sec, not so quick, King's Crusher. Isn't G3 a weakness of the last move? Isn't this H3 pawn hanging? Yeah, these are very interesting things when there's hanging pawns, why are they hanging? It turns out here, if Bishop takes H3, can you see what White would play in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. These are actually often the hidden treasures of these Fisher games, <laughs> where pawns could be taken. You, you can at least work out why. I'll try and work out why. Okay, White will play knight g5. It hits the bishop, and it hits the knight. And if bishop takes, we have queen takes h5, looking at h7. And this situation is actually better for White if White plays what? Especially if white plays one. Okay. Desperado. Bishop takes f6. This would be a, a nice advantage for white. Black's actually uh, got better with rook d2. But bishop takes g7 here. Queen takes. Rook takes f1. It's possible. Believe it or not. Because there's a crazy tactical idea in this situation. Can you guess? What does white play here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. This could have been in Fisher's home preparation just for this opening. Okay, queen d1, bouncing via d1. Of the rook takes, queen d5 check, picks up the knight with an advantage. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all pretty sophisticated stuff. Of the bishop takes h3. Yeah, Fisher didn't just blunder the pawn. <laughs> okay, so we have g6, and now we have h4, which is nice to have. Very nice to have situation with h4. We have bishop e6. If black tries to pin the knight, then knight e3 hits that bishop. And this is going to be better for white, getting that light square bishop. And white can continue with h5, you know, king g2, rook h1 maybe. Big advantage for white here. So we have bishop e6, knight e3, c4. And now knight g5. And this is awkward. The bishop doesn't want to go back. It's knight d5. So we have... Essentially, the, the dark square bishop is given up. Knight a5, knight g4. So Fisher's made this really quite an interesting situation with these double pawns. A lot of dynamic play here, it seems, for white. Bishop takes g4, queen takes. Knight b3. Where else is the knight going? The bishop takes out the knight. Bishop e3. Rook a8. Perhaps stronger resistance is offered by knight g7 here. And there's some work for white to do, for example, like this, this situation. There's work for white to do. White does have a positional advantage, but the knight coming back into e6. Yeah, there's a game here to be had. There's a game to be had, but white's a little bit better positionally. Okay, so, but we have rook a8. And there's a dramatic turn of events here after rook a8, after rook takes. Rook takes rook d1. The d7 square looks sensitive. Queen c6. But actually, rook d5 is used. 
yeah this is a very interesting use of the d5 square and what to do about e5 well black actually lashes out with f5 here knowing that e takes queen takes d5 and g takes springs black you know there's a knight fork knight takes f6 forking rook and queen but key move here what does fisher play in this position i'll give you five seconds to pause the video here okay lovely little move queen d1 very interesting if by the way instead of f5 if rook a1 check had been played king h2 this situation with queen f3 and rook takes b5 it starts to be a bit nasty it's a difficult situation uh, so anyway we have this f5 so queen d1 and now f4 fisher just takes that e takes and now a very nice a very nice tactical move indeed what would you play in this position if i give you five seconds here okay queen takes b3 yeah this diagonal very sensitive we have queen c4 if f takes e3 rook d8 check and queen g8 is checkmate the pawn covers the escape squares so queen c4 is played queen takes b takes and now bishop d4 f3 bishop e3 I mean this is actually a really it's a big advantage this situation anyway it's cut even rook c5 just allowing knight f4 is it's good after king h2 this would be better for white so anyway bishop e3 was played and we have h6 this gives white a very dangerous pawn actually just to give the knight f6 it's a very dangerous pawn for white rook d6 king f7 is played if knight takes e4 here rook d7 being able to use g7 is fun and here for example rook takes g6 white's much better there so uh, king f7 was played but now final tactical little combination from fisher guess what he plays in this position white's play if i give you five seconds to pause the video neat little finish okay forcing with rook takes f6 check bishop d4 check and the pawn is queening it's going to be picking up some material we have king f4 king h2 g5 queening and it's pretty hopeless e5 is played game ended here black's up to nothing really after g3 for example uh here it's uh easy to win and if king e3 then for example e6 is sufficient and if f2 then safest is bishop d4 in my view just take out the pawn don't allow any uh tricks <laughs> yeah just take out the pawn it's easily winning or well, bishop d4 check so yeah we see uh, a very interesting game here with this g3 i think g3 is a talking point of this game and it's an interesting takeaway point that actually white with g3 is constructing something pretty interesting to support eventually that g5 square and all interesting possibilities it gets very interesting as a result of that uh, ingenious little pawn sacrifice idea the imbalances here created made the game pretty exciting very exciting treatments of the Royal of Pairs by Bobby Fischer in this game. Okay, yeah. And the pivoting on D1 is another takeaway point, using the outpost square as a kind of point to help double and infiltrate. So yeah, I think there are some instructive takeaway points from this little game. Not too much. Hi guys, 
If you enjoyed this video lecture, you might want to get more at my course, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher, which I had a blast creating over 25 hours of video content. I tried to get the most instructive juice out of every single game covered and picking the most important games from this period. I had an absolute blast creating it, and I think you will have an absolute blast checking it out. And it's at a big discount code with this link. You know, Kings Crusher TV slash Bobby Fisher has the discount code. So I hope you do check that out. Thanks very much.